All right, Dr. Megan of Leyline here today, and I am so, so, so excited to show you all the Game Master's Dungeon Journal. I've been working on this for a few months now, honestly, like a few years, but now it's finally in fruition. Oh, you can see my ring light, how beautiful. Uh, these come in three beautiful colors. So we've got the red maroon, the kind of blue, and then I think my absolute favorite is this forest green. And so what I'm gonna do with you today is just kind of walk you through this journal and show you what it is. Um, this journal I love because for therapeutic games, everything you absolutely need is inside these pages. It is enough for your documentation for most of your uh, skills-based groups, and it just holds everything that you need uh, completely self-contained for a 10 to 12 week campaign. Uh, so we've got the first few pages that kind of give you a little overview of how to potentially use this book. Of course, disregard these if you don't use it this way. Uh, we start right off with talking about the consent checklist. And so we've got uh, topics and hopefully um, you would give something like this to your players. Uh, you could photocopy this and just hand it to them and then transcribe what they give you. And to kind of keep in mind of what things are okay and not okay in the game. Uh, this is also area over here for no thanks topics of other stuff that we just might not want to see in the game things that we are okay but to use with caution and then our yes topics that we want to see lots of or are totally fine with being in there. Uh, continuing on we've got some of our house rule stuff so the game rules that you might have, the safety tools that you're going to be utilizing and how those safety tools will be implemented, uh, how do we address problems, and then a place for you to annotate any changes that you make during the course of the campaign because we know we can't anticipate everything when we first start. Then one of the things I love about this journal is we have tons of scrap paper in here, more places to write things, graphed out paper to draw maps and things. Uh, then we mill, move into our world building section. So we've got a couple of pages of grid paper here where you can build out the country or region that your campaign is going to take place in. And then we have the area if you do collaborative homebrew type styles where you can do gossip, rumors, and then come up with your story points and beats uh, come up with what the call to action in the central conflict is going to be, and then some of the goals that you have for your players. Um, and they kind of outline those and start to get a feel for what the whole campaign is going to be looking like. Over here we have uh, boxes that can be utilized for more of a flow chart of the call to adventure and moving through each. Uh, in each section, it's quite, quite faint, I don't know if it's showing up well on the video, but there's four boxes, and so you could kind of plot and move things around as needed. And then just your overall sketch of what all 12 weeks are going to be, um, or 10 if you're running a 10-week campaign. Week one is going to be your session zero, then week two, and so on. Uh, this is just really great because it helps you kind of keep that overarching story in mind and helps you move through each of these sections. Then we start going into our places of interest. This is something else I really like because this allows you to flesh out the different cities and towns, um, dungeons, places like that. So the name where the place is, the topography, the population, um, if it's a city or town, you know, culture and story relevance, what they're known for, other notable features, and then a grid map here. So you can draw it out and you have all of this stuff here. We've got, I think, nine places, three, four, Five, a lot of these. Okay, so five, pla five places of interest, which for a 10 to 12 week campaign is more than enough. And then we move into the NPCs of note. This is where you're going to keep track of your non-player characters, their name, where they're located, the physical description that you use for them, the voice that you have for them. So if you are role playing and actually utilizing your voice as part of the role play, um, part of that. A trademark phrase that kind of captures their personality. And then I love this part here, interactions with the party. How has the party treated this NPC and has their feelings towards the party changed as a result? And of course, a nice section over here for notes and then more grid paper just in case. Uh, we've got uh, three of these pages, so enough for nine NPCs, which is more than enough NPCs for most campaigns, more scrap paper. And then going into our characters and players. In fact, this is a photograph I took of some minis I painted. Um, this is planning your treasure. So if you want to have your uh, char uh, player characters get magic items throughout the campaign, you can kind of put that there, what character you think it might be for, and then the location you might be putting that in. I like to give magic items as rewards for players uh, achieving some of their therapeutic goals in games, and so that might be a good way to keep track of that. Of course, more note paper. And then this is for your player information, your kind of overall player dossier. This is 
the player name, the character name, what species or race they're playing, their class, the backstory information, uh, the player desired character growth points for their character, any intended treasure or magic items or things for them, uh, relevant behavioral information or goals for the player themselves, and then a place just to keep notes and observations. And then down here is where you can keep their attendance record. Uh, this is intended that you write the date in the top and then just a check or an X if the person was there or not. And this repeats, I believe, six times for your entire party. So you can keep track of all of that. More note paper. And now we've got our weekly session and planning notes. This stuff is awesome. Uh, so session one, typically that's going to be session zero. So you might not need to fill all this out, but we have a place for your date, what your plan is for that week. Uh, fill out the players and if they're in attendance or not. If you're doing a check-in question, a place to write that there. Uh, just kind of a general plan, beginning, middle, and end. We intentionally kept this pretty short so you're not over planning. We don't want our dungeon masters or game masters over planning their sessions. Uh, major plot points are your character goals. Then again, we've got that nice little grid pattern so you can kind of move through if the players don't move the way they want you want them to. You can move stuff around. And then I like this too is a place where you can write your previous session uh, recap notes. So each week if you're doing a summary, you can put that down in there. Uh, then we have just notes that you can take during the course of the game that's played. Uh, if you are utilizing XP as a form of behavioral um, intervention and rewards, where you can track the XP, and then if you're doing any homework for your players, where you can notate that. And then each week we have a combat planner. I think this is really cool. Not every week are you going to have combat, but this is really handy just in case you do. Really easy place to keep everything on these two pages. Uh, so you have your party overview. Let's do one of the things about this book I love, which is shrink it in half. Uh, so the character name or the player name, the character name, race, class, and the level. The heart is for their health points, uh, the, the shield for their armor class. Any relevant skills, maybe they are immune to fire damage or have sneak attack or something. And then if you are tracking passive skills, so passive perception, passive insight, anything like that. Of course, there's a lot more that's on the character sheet, but this is enough to kind of give you a quick overview of what the players look like and what their kind of overall abilities are. On the other side, we have our enemies. So we have the quick monster stats, the name of the monster, HP, AC, what their bonus is to hit, and then what their damage is. Uh, the page number that they can be found on in whatever book you're using. And then uh, another place to, where you can just maybe write out the damage a little bit better. And then over here, we have your initiative tracker. So and we put little circles in there. So if we're trying to keep track of something that lasts for 10 rounds or things like that, uh, really easy to keep track of all of those things in here. So really, really love this. This is an awesome way to keep track of minion monsters and to do all of that stuff. And again, your note paper, grid paper, just in case you need it. And this repeats for 12 weeks. Uh, so we've got this going all the way through towards the back. So this is, repeats every week. And again, this is enough space for you really to write your notes and observations and everything that you would need to keep track of for your different weeks. At the back of the book, we have our boss planner. So this is for your big bad evil guy, your main antagonist. Uh, so they have a more uh, more space because they're going to be a more well thought out NPC typically and have a lot more going on for them. So of course their name, their physical description, their voice, what their goal or desire is. What is it they're trying to do? What is their plan? What are their flaws and weaknesses? We want to make sure that our, you know, the evil guys have flaws as well. We want the characters to be embracing flaws and we also want their, you know, adversaries to have those flaws. And then what are their allies? What do they do? And then a nice big page for some notes here. And then for your final battle, if it turns into a battle, we've got a little bit of a different thing here. So same thing with party overview. There's the initiative again. Uh, but for the boss monster, we write down what the monster is, what page you can find it on, the uh, HP, AC, the damage to hit, any lair actions that they have, any special abilities, any resistances or legendary actions, a nice little place to keep that, and then their minion area, and then any notes that you have. And again, more, another thing for a secondary boss, and the party overview, and more note paper to end this. I am 
so thrilled with this journal. Like this is something I've been wanting as a therapeutic DM for so long and I'm so excited that it is finally here. It's available through the Geek Therapeutic store or on Amazon. Uh, please check it out. Let us know what you think and I hope that this is helpful to you.